Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Avery and to the people online. Good morning and welcome. Um, in bulletin, you have some uh, people with concerns or prayers that are listed there and the birthdays of the month, the whole month listed. Um, flea market is coming up, and I guess uh, starting with the 7th, you can start bringing your stuff in. Uh, they have the times written down, the date. Uh, and it starts on August 12th, and she still needs help. The flea market starts on the 12th, and she still needs help. So please sign up in the foyer if you can, um, so, so that uh, Phyllis can see who, who will, who's willing to help. We have a district picnic coming up at Mingo Park, Summer Bulletin. Um, we have our Avian Action. And let's see. the rest of it, I guess you can read through some. <laughs> we will. Uh, Portion. Leader, oh that's me. Just when, <laughs> just when we are feeling most discouraged. Oh please rise. I'm sorry. <laughs> Once a month isn't enough, I guess. Just when we were feeling most discouraged, God burst into our lives with healing mercy. Lord, listen to our hearts, our cries, our prayers. Give us peace and hope in our spirits. Praise be to God. Okay, we'll sing him 496, three hour prayer.
reading from Scripture, Romans 9, 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cruised and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong to the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. He talks with them. He has all kinds of things. 
But then the disciples come and go, we need to show these people away. Get them out of here. It's getting late. They're getting hungry and so are we. And Jesus tells his disciples, go find something for me. You feed them. You have to feed them. And they're like, all we've got are how many fish? And five loaves of bread. That's all we have. We only two fish and five loaves of bread. Two, like, two pieces of cheese and five crackers. That's not going to feed everybody. How can we do this? Well, Jesus takes it. He blesses it. And everybody got to eat that day. And then, here's the best part. After they all ate, this is what they all say got to do. They got to take leftovers out. There was more than enough to feed everybody. And that's what we have to realize with Jesus. There's always more than enough to feed everybody that's here. No matter what it is, all you have to do is just go to Jesus and just say, you know, help me with this. And there's always more than enough for us to have to share with everybody. Share our love, share our kindness, share whatever we want. There's always enough to go around and share with everybody. So you pray with me, please. Dear Lord, we do thank you for always being there with us and always being willing to listen and always providing for our cares, our wants, our needs. And Lord, even though we don't feel that we have enough, you make it enough. And so Lord, we just ask that you be with Abby and Maddie and Lehman and the rest of us. When we sit there and go, there's not enough here. That we bring it to you, and there's always plenty. So be with all of us, and be with these children especially, as they continue to learn more about you, so they can take what they learn and share that with however many people you put in their way. And all these things we ask in your name. Amen. I do have something here for you. You don't want one, do you? Yeah, you don't want one. There's a story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, There's a blue one. You like blue ones, huh? Maybe you want one. Maybe you want to practice with cheese. Oh, this is my snack for later. Never mind. <laughs> there, that's small. All right. I think you guys need to go with Mrs. Krause now. Give our family peace 
relaxation. And also do the focus. In recovering from the fall. Where we know that she's so worried about the flea market that's coming up. Where we just ask that we provide that healing she's wanting. And if people step forward, not only from this church but other churches, and say, Yes, I will be willing to help. So Phyllis does not have that worry and that stress. And you with all those who are suffering somehow this thing, whether it's worries, whether it's concerns, help us bring all those things to you. And so Lord, we bring what joys we do have, and there should be many. We lift up all these concerns, some of them spoken, and some of them not. We give all these to you. We say, Together, the prayer that your son taught his disciples to say by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us the day of our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, and to be the day of the trespasses in his house. And give us our temptation, to deliver us from you. From Matthew 14, 13 through 21. Feeding the Now Jesus heard this. He withdrew from there in a boat to a desert, deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They not need go away. You gave them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Will you pray with me and for me, please? Well, the Israelites 
wild eagles. But Pharaoh and his army chased after them. So the Jews ran as fast as they could until they got to the Red Sea. The Egyptian army was getting closer and closer. So Moses got on his walkie-talkie and told the Israeli Air Force to bomb the Egyptians. While that was happening, the Israeli Navy built a pontoon boat and a bridge so the people could cross over and they made it. By now, the was shot and said, Is that the way they taught you in Sunday school, that story? Well, no, not exactly, admitted Danny. But if I told you the way they told it to us, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> With childlike innocence, little Danny put his finger on the pulse of our sophisticated adult world, where cool skepticism actually reigns supreme. It is more popular today to operate in a black and white world of facts. And of course, we leave no space for the miraculous. There's no room for the gray in between areas. And so when we read the story of the feeding of 5,000, we tend to focus our attention on the question, did it really happen that way? Is that what happened? There have been a number of attempts to explain this miracle. One attempt says the people were so moved by Jesus' generosity and the generosity of the little boy that they brought forth their own food that they had hidden underneath their cloaks and in their traveling pouches. This way, everyone was satisfied. Finally, like have a potluck dinner that you just brought anything you wanted. Another theory says that this story is not really talking about physical hunger, but more about spiritual hunger. When the small amount of food was passed around to everyone, everyone tore off a very small, municipal, symbolic fragment. It's a real piece. In this way, Jesus is said to have satisfied the thirst of the soul and not the stomach. I think these questions, though, did it really happen that way? Say more about us than they do Jesus. Because if Jesus is truly the Messiah, then there is no question that he performed miracles, and on a regular basis. The point of the story of the feeding of 5,000 is not to prove that the miracles do happen. The point of the story is that it teaches us three separate things. It teaches us that Jesus is the fulfillment of the word. We are to serve at the table of the Lord, and we can use our abilities in service to others. This morning's reading from Matthew is the only miracle, though, aside from the resurrection, that is actually included in all four Gospels. The only other one. And this should tell us something then about its importance. In this story, Jesus heals the sick. He encourages people when they are sad. And when they are hungry, he feeds them. And the key word that holds everything together, though, is compassion. Jesus saw a crowd, and he had compassion on them. This ability to lay aside his own needs and offer compassion to others is one of the things that sets Jesus apart. In the Gospels, we are told that Jesus had compassion on those before he healed them. Compassion for sinners. Compassion for the lost. Compassion for the lonely. Compassion for the sad. And when he was traveling through all the different villages, we were told that he had compassion on the people because they were harassed and they were helpless and they were like sheep without a shepherd. That is who our Savior is. And that is where God is like then. And Jesus is very observant. He looks at the crowds with a heart that is sensitive to their needs. And what Jesus sees is the helplessness of people. And that touches him deeply. So he feels compassion. He is moved to help these people and to teach his disciples the great necessity of really seeing people for who they are and to have compassion on them. Compassion is a feeling. And like any feeling, it's not something that we can just decide we want to have it now, but not have it later. It comes in a reaction to something that has happened in our lives. And I believe 
that our capacity to have compassion is shaped by how do we look at others. It's a way in which we can identify with people. And it seems to me that this begins when we listen well to what another person has to say. And this is what Jesus does. Right? Think about it. I mean, to hear someone is one thing. You hear what I'm telling you. But to really listen and to really hear and to appreciate where someone else stands and their beliefs, how someone else feels, how someone else thinks, that's actively listening. It's a means by which we take another person seriously. And we give that person dignity then. We can't have compassion. Unless we enter into another person's life by identifying with that person. And that's what Jesus does. That's also what we, as Jesus followers, are called to do as well. We're called to have compassion. We're called to listen to someone else and what they have to say. And when we do this, when we actively listen, it helps fill our empty spaces that we have inside of us. A reading from Matthew starts in the middle of something else that is going on. Just with the word verse 13 begins. It says, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. But what had Jesus just heard? that he wanted to get away by himself and think about it. King Herod had just executed Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. He had been, had, he had been beheaded as a party favor for Herod's daughter. It's no wonder then that Jesus wanted and needed some time to just get away and be pray and grieve by himself. I'm sure we've all been there. We've lost somebody close to us, and we just want to be left alone and nobody bother us. But Jesus is not the only one, though, to hear that gruesome news. We are also told that the crowds have also heard of the murder. And so the people, they're understandably frightened. And so what do they do? They go after seeking Jesus for both comfort and for guidance. What are we supposed to do next, Jesus? So while Jesus is out on a boat at sea, they follow him on foot from the shore. And so when Jesus brings his boat to shore, what does he see? He sees this huge crowd of people. And he sees their grief. He sees their fear. He sees their longing for hope and a need for a word of encouragement. He sees their emptiness and he has compassion on them. He knows and he identifies with what they're feeling and he reaches out and he heals their sickness. He spends the day in conversation with them and then night begins to fall. And this is when the disciples decide that they need to come to Jesus with a genuine concern for the people. All day long they haven't been worried about, but now they have concern for it. The people, they need to leave. They need to avoid the problems being stuck out on the road and in the dark with no food. This is a remote place, they say. Send the crowds away. Move them out of here. So they can go to the villages and they can go and buy food for themselves. But Jesus, he takes a different approach. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And the disciples now are shocked by what Jesus is suggesting. And that's because the disciples, they're approaching the situation with a theology of scarcity rather than a theology of plenty. Even if you ever find yourself thinking that way, we don't have enough. We can't do this. That's out of question. How could we ever possibly be able to do such a thing? There is not enough of us. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. There is no way we can pull this off. But Jesus, he wants us to think not in terms of what we don't have, but in terms of what God has given us. 
I think that's the message that God is giving us in our reading for this morning. Is that if we will embrace a challenge, if we bring forward what we have, no matter how little it is, then God will just do the rest. And what God does is what we offer Him is always more than sufficient to get that job done. But you know, this story is also a sharp reminder to us that we, as individual Christians, must never be so wrapped up in ourselves, our own problems, our own concerns, that we withdraw from the world. And we hide under a blanket, and all we want to do is sleep all day. We have no enjoyment in life. We refuse to be a part of the ministry of Jesus, which is providing help, love, and support when others are in need. But in first these days, so many people suffer from depression, for things that have been said, things that have been done, that they just withdraw from the world, and they have no enjoyment in life. Depression is so huge in today's society that so many people go through it, and it's I recognize how depressed they really and truly are. And left alone, we can easily then start thinking like the disciples and say, send them away. They are not my concern. They're not my problem. I don't have enough. I have nothing to offer them. But this is not an attitude that our Lord will set. He instead calls for us to be generous and to share. This story is a clear call for us, the Church of Jesus Christ, to be a compassionate people who hear and listen to the cries of the people and we respond to their needs. But the needs are so great. People are hungry all around us. They are hungry for a deeper connection with God and with each other. They are hungry for purpose and for meaning in their lives. They are hungry for hope. And many are hungry, quite literally, for their next meal. The feeding of the 5,000 isn't some kind of spectacle just to award Jesus' fame and his popularity, popularity among the people. But rather, it's an insistence by God that we, Jesus' followers, distinguish ourselves by our love, our compassion, our resourcefulness, our generosity, and our faith in God. We are called to have compassion with Christ. And this is what fills our empty spaces, along with filling the empty spaces of the world. One word, compassion. Today, even though there are so many that are living in desperate and sometimes only times, we are called to learn what it means to follow Jesus. Are you looking for some relief and some change, possibly? How we approach that change and how we look at change will determine what our outcome of our lives will look like. How do we fill those empty spaces in our lives? Will you pray with me, please? Dear Lord, so often we sit there and go, I don't have enough. What could I possibly offer? From the youngest to the oldest, we feel this way. Whenever we retreat into our solitude, we hide our covers, and we don't want anything to be bothered by anybody, we always just say, send them away, don't bother me. We go into a depression board, and we feel depressed for all that's been going on around us. But help us, Lord. Help each one of us come to you. Bring our joys, bring our concerns, bring our worries to you. For you will have compassion on us. And as you listen to us, help us have that listening ear to what others have to say. And so, Lord, as we go through our days, help us fill our empty spaces 
by feeding on your word and all that you do. And all these things we ask in your most holy name. Amen. Now we remain sealed and join in hymn number 277.
pray for me, please? Most gracious, most loving God, as we hear the story of feeding the 5,000, we sit there and say, what can I offer? You provided us with so many opportunities and so many gifts and talents, but we have so much that we can offer in service to you. And so, Lord, as we bring our gifts this day, Help us open our hearts to see what gifts we can offer to those who are hurting, those who are lonely, those who just need a listening ear. And help us take those gifts that you've given us so we can use them in service to you. And all these things you ask in your holy name.
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever, Father Almighty. Amen. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church to receive communion. Communion is open to all. Please come forward as directed by the ushers. And communion will be in the altar. Spill for many for remission of sins. Please forgive. The blood of Christ has been spilled for many for the remission of their sins. Please take and drink of it.
You know our worries. You know our fears. You know our joys. You know our concerns. Lord, we bring those things to you. We participate in this mystery, this mystery of the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup that your son is to do with his disciples before he gave himself up for our sins. Lord, help us know the sacrifice he was given that day so we can go out and whenever we feel that we don't have anything to give, that we know that there is always something that we can give us something. Whether it's listening to your right shoulder to walk in them. Or those things there. So help us just be continually to grow and be stronger in you. That we can go out and we can show a world that needs to know it, what it is to be a child of yours. And all of these things we ask in your most holy name. Amen. Why a price has been broken for you? Please take it.
our talents are minimal to offer to anyone. But Jesus tells you to go and share what you have with others. And you might be surprised with what just a little bit of a little ear will do for someone else. So God be with each and every one of you until we meet again. That's all God's children said. Amen.